Over the months that we gather together, I regularly say to us, you don't recognize the weight of the person sitting next to you, how significant the people are that we are looking at and walking past in the foyer. I say regularly that there are incredible people that are calling Imagine Church home. And Imagine Church is not this platform or the building. It is the people Amen. that are here. And what we share, which is so cool and so special, is a deep desire for an authentic relationship with a real God. Right. And we look different, we sound different, but we share that. And he has been so good to us because yeah. in that, my wife said this, you're allowed to just bring yourself. You don't have to look polished. You don't have to be perfect. You just get to be you here because he accepts you that way. There are amazing people that we are sitting next to and beside, and Nicole is an amazing person. And the artwork that is sitting up front, I'd like at some point, if you guys have the opportunity, you're going to want to come by and just have a deeper look at what's sitting up here. There's some extraordinary artwork that was done. But this wasn't just done, Nicole, out of sort of random, you had some spare time. There's a, a real specific purpose behind what this art, why you did this artwork and what you're doing with it. However you'd like to share, can you tell us what we need to know about this artwork? Sure. Um, Hi, everybody. Hello. Um, yeah, I'm a full-time artist. Can you take this one up? Sure. Okay. Is this better? Yeah. Sweet. Um, yeah, well... Okay, I'll tell you the story. Um, about a year ago, I had a chat with um, a pastor that I was uh, working at the same church with, and um, he just, he was on a journey to, like, experience Holy Spirit more, and he was having dreams and visions, and, like, he didn't really know what to do with them yet, and he was like, I don't know, like, I'm, like is it, like, a mental thing? I'm not sure. Anyway, Holy Spirit, like, touched his heart, and a year later, um, he was promoted to the president of a denomination here in Canada, and then he contacted me, and he was like, Nicole, God has been talking to my heart, like, the bride doesn't know him yet the way she could. She isn't, like, released into the world to the full potential that she has yet, so Nicole, like, this is how it's going to happen. It's going to go past people's minds and through their hearts first. And the way that's going to happen is through art. And Nicole, you are a prophetic artist, so can you make some paintings for our regional gatherings in Ontario? And I was like, absolutely. And he was like, can I fly you out there and can you talk about it? I'm like, yes. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So I fly out on Thursday. Just, just a sec. Yeah. This is you... You were, how did you meet this pastor? What caused him to want to connect with you? Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, well, it's a, it was a pretty conservative church that we were both in. And um, huh, there's this thing that kind of happens when, when Jesus, like, touches me in my, in my heart or, like, just tells me a truth or something. I can't control it, but my shoulder shakes a little bit. You'll probably get to witness it at some point. It's so weird. Right? I feel like a weirdo. I was like, I was that kid in church who was like, God, please don't make anything weird happen to me. You know, like, like all those people. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, I was out backpacking like a few years ago, and like I was in India, and there's one of those moments where you pray a stupid prayer, like, God, just do whatever you want with me. And it started then, and I just haven't been able to get rid of it. So, <laughs> so anyway, uh, this guy walks by me in our conservative church and just, I don't know, he does this to everyone. He's really loving. He's like Mr. Dress Up, but on Holy Spirit steroids. And he just, like, he, like, pats me on the shoulder and he's like, bless you. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh, sorry, I know it's like totally not kosher. But like, you know, it's just God. It's like, it's not demonic. It's just not crazy. And he was like, no, what is that? We need to have coffee. And like, he, he grilled me for like an hour. And he was like, how do you know it's God's voice? How do you, how, how did you meet God? Tell me more. Like, wow, okay, you went from conservative church to like, you met Holy Spirit. You changed it. What, how? And he just like asked me all these questions. And then, yeah, 
Holy Spirit got him too. <laughs> Context behind this story. This is an artist who art is not typically the uh, most celebrated expression within the church. She has yielded her gift to the Lord. She's yielded her life to the Lord. She gets tapped on the shoulder by somebody who is influential at the moment in a significant conservative church. Holy Spirit is illuminated to says we have to chat and our artist is sharing her story Amen. she's not coming at him she's not hammering him she's simply just telling him Amen. this is what this has been like for me and you know what god has asked us to be witnesses he's not asked us to be the prosecution yeah. pushing pushing for a verdict all he asks us to do is tell what we know and answer any questions let me say that again tell what you know and answer any questions and he'll do the rest that's what she did now fast forward. So where did you say you're going and what are you doing? What, uh, what's the significance of this? Well, um, at first I was, I just kind of agreed to make four paintings, um, which I'll share with you later. Um, but, but then like the more we talked, like the more, I guess like we just realized we had the same vision, which is to release creativity in the church. And like, and oh man, like, I think we're stepping into a new time, like, of, you know, of, like, us realizing that, that art is, is so powerful, and, and I don't just mean visual art, I mean, like, like, all the arts, like, music, dance, fashion, sound, um, fine art, sculpture, um, you know, writing, spoken word, poetry, all of it, you know, like, all the things, and, like, and it's going to awaken the bride, and like they're going to search for it. Did I answer your question? I think I got excited about something. I'm not else. sure. Um, <laughs> right. Oh yes. And then so we just started freaking out in his office about like with all his staff, and we're all just like, yes, it's coming. And then he was like, okay, well you need to you come share, come talk. Like we'll pay for your hotel, we'll pay for your flight. Just come out there. Like come on come to Ontario, come to Red Deer, come to all the regionals, and I'm like, okay. And then and then I was like, wait, wait, um, so I know like you commissioned these, and these are technically property of, you know, you and the denomination, but like, I have this church, and I love them, and like, I feel like I would really love to show the art to them, like, can I steal them <laughs> next weekend? Is like the first like, off on the, on the screen here? <laughs> oh yeah, the you first one. Tell, them, tell us what they're all about? Oh yeah, but first, I have to just say, he was like, yes, steal them, show them to Imagine Church, because this art belongs to the body, like the bride, all of them. He's like, Nicole, take it across Canada, take it across the world, it's yours anytime you want, because this is for all of you. Wow. Oh, well, that's super stretched. Okay, well. Hey, look, you, you got to come up and see them, because yeah. obviously they're not ideal up here, but this gives the folks in the back a chance to see. Tell us what hey. the, that's better. Okay. Tell us about these. All right, so we have... Um, a four-part series here, and they're all in the story of David and Goliath, but they represent more than that. So this is Goliath um, threatening the Israelites, and they are running away. Um, so this is sort of a portrait of like when the darkness um, puts threats at us, and we're kind of like, ah, we don't realize what our true identity is. So these are four portraits of identity, but. Um, you can't really see it on this picture, but I've like put gold, um, kind of plating or whatever, um, on all of them. And the gold here still lies on the shoulders of the fleeing Israelites and behind the giant because God hasn't left them. And at the end of this story, like they're going to turn right around and pursue all the darkness right out of that land, right? Like they don't know the end of the story yet. They don't know their identity, but God has given that land into their hands. And then behind the giant, there's like a bunch of gold too, because um, man, like your inheritance, the size of your inheritance, is like usually proportional to the size of the giant that's like standing in front of it, right? So anyway, um, the only like highlighted bit on this giant is is his mouth, because all he can do is like shout empty threats, right? And they're just listening, right? And, like it's a mic they drop don't know right there. Seriously. <laughs> okay. Um, and there's like a shadow that's falling on them too, because that's all that's touching them, right? The enemy just has smoke and mirrors, right? It's so, it's, none of it's true. But, yeah, that's the first one. Awesome. Okay, this is the second one. 
So you can kind of see in the shadows, there's a reflective image of like, Mount David is being given the armor of King Saul. You know, he said, all right, I'm gonna fight the giant and the king is saying, oh, well, here, let me equip you with what works for me. This is a bunch of armor. And he tries to put on David and, and it's a false identity. David's like, this doesn't fit me. Like I can't, I can't fight in this. And um, yeah, the pastor commissioned me originally we were just gonna do the picture of the armor, but then I was like, hey, I know why it didn't work, because here's the true reflection. David fought the bear and the lion and nothing but his skin, right? And God protected him. So the gold lies around the heads of the bear and the lion because our past battles um, give us hope for our present ones, right? So there's there's David just kind of remembering who he really is. So, so there's that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number three. David is now striding forth to take that giant down. Um, and I, I painted it so that the light is casting a shadow on the darkness. You know, like the light is pushing the darkness back with every step he makes. And there's a wee little um, gold crown above his head because he knows who he is. You know, he's anointed royalty. Um, Easter egg, there's a bear paw tucked into his bag because he, like, I don't know, if I was, if, if I killed a bear, I'd probably turn it into something and wear it every day. Nice. So yeah, um, there's that. And then um, his, the shadow is really big, but there's, I put the gold in the stars because our God is even bigger, right? So David's eyes are fixed on that starry heaven. And, yeah. And number four, this is the last one. So the giant is totally dead, and uh, David is cutting his head off with the giant's own sword. And um, the church, symbolized by the Israelite army, is now surging forward to take the ground that is theirs. So that's the last one. Yeah.